Even though Red Sox pitcher Connor Siebold's second major league start on Monday night did not go as planned, Siebold has still been dealing in Worcester throughout the 2022 season. And I had the opportunity to interview Connor before he made his second start and was called up to the Red Sox this past week to ask him about what has made him so successful this season throughout Triple A and more. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to welcome you back into the Locked On Red Sox podcast. And thank you so much for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. I'm your host, Massachusetts Pirates team insider, Jake Ignazewski. And since the Sox had an off day yesterday, I decided it would be a perfect opportunity to do this week's farm report. And what better way to do that than talk about an interview one of the Red Sox's starters this past week. Now, when I recorded this interview with Connor Seabold, I didn't plan on him being caught up as quickly as he was, but I was also hoping that he was able to output a really good performance when he did ultimately get caught up. As we saw on Monday, that wasn't the case. He ended up pitching four and two-thirds, allowing nine hits, seven earned runs, one walk, and seven strikeouts to the Toronto Blue Jays in game one in Toronto. Not exactly how most fans wanted things to go. Definitely not how I wanted things to go. But he did look good, uh, forcing 19 swing and misses which is tied for the most by a pitcher this season. But one of the biggest reasons I wanted to talk to Connor Seabold was because before he was called up this past week, he had been wheeling and dealing in over 11 starts in Worcester, sporting a 5-1 and one record, striking out 51 batters with a 2.09 ERA. And he's really impressed for the Red Sox in their AAA affiliate ever since he was traded over in that trade deadline deal with Nick Pavetta from the Philadelphia Phillies. And it's pretty crazy looking back on how much the Red Sox fleeced Philadelphia in that deal, looking at Workman and Hembry, both of the guys that the Red Sox and Bloom sent over to the Phillies are not in baseball right now. And Nick Pavetta is now the second or third starter in that Red Sox rotation has just been so dominant. And Connor Seabold is really doing well in AAA, but still trying to find his footing in the major leagues. But in my interview with Connor, I had the opportunity to talk to him a little bit about what has made him so effective this season in AAA, what he's been really been working on. Also, what process does he go through after he has a tough start? And how does he really try and figure out how he should have done better? And then lastly, a few random facts that I think you guys would find interesting. But after seeing how Seabold did in his second major league start, obviously not what we wanted, but I'm curious to hear his thoughts on it. I'm curious to see what he plans on doing during his time in AAA to learn from some of his mistakes that he had in his start against the Blue Jays and how he'll continue to work on those things during his time in Worcester. Going to do my best. I'm going to try and get that interview next week. And if I do ultimately get it, that interview will be for the farm report of next week's episode. But before we get into my conversation with Connor Seabold, I just want to take a second to talk to you about bet online. So with how well the Red Sox have been doing in June, you got to get on bet online and start betting on this team going into July, whether it's the money line, whether it's the spread, whether it's, you know, Rafael Devers, Xander Bogarts, hits, home runs, RBIs, whatever. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports info. And they're also a great place for you to find scores, podcasts, news this season. And it's the fastest and easiest way to find all your favorite sporting events like MMA, boxing, golf, Major League Baseball, and Head over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action at Bet Online, 
where the game starts. So let's get into my conversation with Connor Seabolt. How have you been feeling so far this season? Uh, good. You know, I had the um, had the pec thing for a few weeks. You know, it kind of sucked to miss some time, but um, you know, got back at it last week. Felt pretty good, and then uh, knocked some rust off. Got you know to where I think I left off last night. Um, everything felt really good. And you were really effective last night. You know, obviously going five innings, only allowing three hits and striking out five. So what what's made you so effective so far this season, especially last last night? Um, throwing strikes. Um, you know, fastball slider have been just the combo, and you know, mixing in the occasional changeup and curveball has really uh, done a lot. Uh, last night, I mean, I mixed everything in, and you know, throwing them for strikes, getting guys to swing, getting guys to miss. I mean, I mean, that was about as good as I could ask for. Is there anything specific that you're that you're really working on right now on the mound? Um, well, right now, I mean, I'm just trying to build back up from the injury, but um, outside of that. I mean, you know, I've been trying to sprinkle in some curveballs uh, as much as possible. It's kind of a new pitch. I'm still, like, trying to get the feel. But, I mean, uh, recently I feel like they've been pretty good. And I think, you know, if it keeps progressing the way it is, I think I have a solid fourth, fourth pitch. So, yeah, I'd say that's probably the biggest thing right now. And, you know, we, we saw in May uh, when you played against Rochester, you had a little bit of a rough outing allowing five runs, but then you, you played them five days later and only allowed one hit. So after after games like that where it might be a rough start, what sort of process do you go through to understand maybe what didn't go so well and how, how you can improve during the next start? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's all about adjustments, especially, um, you know, when you uh, when you face a team twice in one week, like, you know, they're going to they're gonna make adjustments on you as much as you're making adjustments on them. So it's... As far as, um, well, it, it's just a matter of, you know, focusing on the right stuff, focusing on what you did wrong, what you could do better. And, I mean, I know this is kind of cliche, but, like, you know, uh, just kind of moving on to that next outing, kind of flushing the, the last one out. And, um, you know, I thought my execution was a lot better in that second game than it was the first. Uh, I thought my stuff was better. Um, and, you know, they're, obvi- they, they're playing great right now. And so that was kind of, you know, uh, something that I kind of took to uh, not personally but like I, I wanted that second outing because you know they kind of beat us up all week and I, I wanted to get out there and you know try and shut them down. It definitely showed in the stats those those adjustments and I was curious do you have any sort of game day rituals that, that you usually stick to before a start? Uh, I used to have a lot I've kind of like toned it down a little bit um, I typically will try and wear the same thing to the field, you know, uh, some good jojo or good mojo. Um, outside of that, like, you know, I'll shave before I go to the field. But I mean, yeah, I, I, there's not a whole lot that I do. Um, that's like, you know, I, the less of those you can have while still like, you know, s- staying comfortable, staying like prepared is, is kind of a better thing. Cause you know, you're on the road, you're not going to be able to pull that off every time. So yeah, I mean, n- nothing crazy. That makes sense. And, and something that I've tried to do with, with these interviews is mix in a little bit of get to know you questions outside of baseball so then the fans can get to know you. So um, do you have any hidden talents or anything like that that, that you might want to share? I can draw. I can draw pretty good. Um, actually, I have a, a second Instagram account. Haven't used it in like two years. But, uh, you know, I, I got like really, really into drawing uh, a couple of years ago, like, like into – you know, sharing my stuff, and so I've, I'll post stuff every once in a while. But I mean, if if you follow it, don't look for anything new anytime soon. Um, but it's it's actually in my my actual Instagram uh, bio is the link to the other one. So um, if you're if you guys are interested in checking it out, <laughs> go over. I, it's nothing mind blowing, but I mean, I thought it was good enough to share. So. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have to go and give that a follow. That's pretty cool, man. Uh, do, do, you, do you have any things that you like to specifically draw? Uh, I'm, I'm big into, like, the tiki stuff and so, like, the tropical vibe. Um, and so a lot of it is based around that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I typically stick to that, but every once in a while I mix it up. And then, and then lastly, uh, outside of baseball, what's on your bucket list? On my bucket list? That's a good question. Um, Put me on the spot. Too. <laughs> I've heard a lot of traveling. That's what a lot of people have been saying. But any anything other than traveling, specifically that like 
let's say tomorrow you, somebody told you, you know, you got 24 hours, what what would you do? Um, oh shit, I guess I'd travel. Yeah. Also, sorry for. No. I'm not. Um, yeah, I, I, I know you said besides traveling, but I mean, uh, I guess that's a cop out answer. But <laughs> is there any specific place? Um. Yeah, I mean, I I really would like to go check out like, you know, some of the some of the Pacific islands. Um, I think that would be cool. I mean, I've never been to the Bahamas. I've never been to um, a lot of those places. I, another one, though, is, um, is Ireland. Ireland. Ireland would be cool. Um, I've, you know, I, I've talked to my fiance a bunch, and, like, we, we eventually want to do that trip. So I think that's that would be on the bucket list if I had to put anything. I hope you guys did enjoy my conversation with Red Sox pitcher Connor Seabold, and I'm, I'm very excited to see if I will be able to have the opportunity to talk to him next week in Worcester, crossing my fingers, but if I don't, I'm still going to try and get him in the following weeks or so, but don't worry, we have some very exciting interviews planned for the Farm Report segment Guys like Ryan Fitzgerald, you know, may, maybe some Yomer Sanchez down the line. We'll see. We'll see. Get excited and make sure to subscribe to the Locked On Red Sox podcast on whatever audio platform that you're listening to. And we also post the video version on YouTube. So if you're watching my beautiful face from there, go down there and click the subscribe button because we post five days a week, sometimes six days a week to keep you updated about your favorite team, the Boston Red Sox. Every single game, we do a game recap. And every single week, we also do this little segment called the Farm Report, which you're watching right now, to keep you updated about what is going on with the Red Sox in the farm system and to also bring you exclusive interviews with Red Sox prospects. But as always, we greatly appreciate everybody tuning in and for making Locked On Red Sox your first listen of every single day. And talking about prospects, make sure to make your second listen Locked On MLB Prospects. Host Lindsey Crosby is your prospect encyclopedia, and he's going deep on the MLB stars of today and tomorrow. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And you know what's also free? Following Locked On Red Sox on Twitter. It's LO underscore Red Sox. You can also follow myself over there. It's at Jake Iggy. And also my co-host, Lauren, is La 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 with three laws, Lauren with four R's. But we greatly appreciate everybody tuning in to this episode of the Locked on Red Sox podcast. And also for all the support that you guys give us each and every single day and each and every single week. But hope everybody has a great, relaxing weekend, enjoys this beautiful weather. Happy Fourth of July early. And I hope you're able to spend some time with your family as well. But Hopefully the Sox can continue this great winning run into July against the Chicago Cubs. But we'll end this episode how we always end it. Let's go Sox. Peace.